Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about the truth about medical coding shortcut sheets, AKA the cheat sheets, okay? Uh, if you're brand new to my channel, welcome, I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I have been a medical coder for over 10 years. Uh, I really like sharing the things that I know. We talk about various tips and tricks on my videos. So if you'll take a second, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button. I hope that you'll like this. And at the end, if this video helps you, I hope that you'll share it, okay? So let's get started. All right. So so the shortcut sheets, right? You're working in a new place. They give you this shortcut sheet and they say, this is our shortcut sheet or our cheat sheet. And um, this is the codes that we use. Here you go. And this is all you need to worry about. Are these a good idea? No. <laughs> in my experience, and I, like I said, I've been a coder for over 10 years. These are not a good thing because of the simple fact that it shortcuts and short changes you growth as a medical coder. Everything that we learn and all the things that we are taught along the way, those are building blocks to making us high caliber medical coders. You want to be a high caliber medical coder, but how do you get there? How do you, how do you start to know all of this stuff? Uh, when I talk on my videos, I talk about all the things that I do to, to get more knowledge. I read the New England Journal of Medicine in my spare time. <laughs> uh, I read different books. I expose my mind and my brain to different videos on YouTube as far as like medical goes so that way I can better understand procedures and surgeries and things like that. So I do those different varying things to help myself grow. When you are given a cheat sheet and say, oh, these are all the codes that we use and these are the codes that go with them and here you go. And this is all you need to worry about. It's, it's the wrong thing because first of all, you never know if what they are selecting um, on these cheat sheets is actually what is actually happening. And if you're going through mindlessly and not really taking a second to look at the documentation and make sure that it marries up perfectly, then that's when you have an issue because that clinic could potentially be losing lots of money. That doctor's office could be losing lots of money. That facility could lose a lot of money because you weren't coding properly. It's important to make sure that you are looking at these things. If somebody gives you a thing that says, well, here, here these are our most commonly uh, used procedures. These are some of the codes that go with it. It's okay to look at it, but don't become dependent on it because of the simple fact that every encounter or every round, if you are working in a, in an inpatient setting, every encounter, if you're working in an outpatient setting, uh, is, is going to be need to look, is going to need to be looked at individually. And for the outpatient side, whatever happens on that date of service is what you are looking at. It doesn't matter what happened in the previous visits. It's happening. What, what happens on that current encounter and what is documented on that date of service is what you need to go by. So again, if you are just, you know, going through and just going along to get along and this is what we do and not really questioning it, that is where I'm telling you that you're wrong. You need to question. And it's not to question to be difficult. It's to question to make sure that everything is being picked up properly and appropriately. Uh, every coder has a potential to be a high caliber medical coder. I strive every day to be that high caliber medical coder. I want to do things correctly. I, if something doesn't sound right, and if somebody is telling me you will code it this way, no. <laughs> I will not. Uh, I will do as appropriate as whatever uh, whatever the documentation is reflecting is what the codes that I'm going to select. And if it makes some people upset, that is what is going to happen because at the end of the day, I have the rules on my side. I have the coding guidelines on my side. I have ethics on my side that say that I can question these things. It doesn't matter how long the person has been in the field. I've seen brand new coders be able to, uh, to, to point out an error in a veteran coder's um, code selection. I've seen that. I've seen, of course, veteran coders do the same thing to brand new coders because they're still learning. But I've, I've seen it the opposite way. I've seen where students are like, well, wait a minute, isn't this another, another code? And then the veteran coder's like, oh, yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> well, well if they have a good attitude about it. And that's another thing too. If you are doing something 
that is uh, corrected by somebody else and they are actually correct, they are your coworker and perhaps they're, they're telling you maybe you should look at this code instead or maybe um, you should read this section right here so that way you can better understand this. It is a very mature action to be able to say, oh, okay, well, I was wrong. Uh, I, I've had to do that before myself. I've had to say, oh, okay, I was wrong. <laughs> and, you know, then I would correct my error. But at the same time, if you're not willing to take that, if, you're, if it's hard for you, uh, it, it is going to make things a lot more difficult. And I think to be a high caliber medical coder, you have to be able to take direction and you have to be able to take... Um, Criticism, constructive criticism. Now there's a difference between being criticized constructively and being criticized where somebody is just, oh, ha ha, I'm right and you're wrong. You know, that there's no place for that immaturity in this field, okay? If you're, if you're like, ha ha, I'm right and you're wrong, that's wrong, okay? It doesn't matter how veteran you are or how new you are, if you have that attitude, it's not a good thing because we are all a team. And this is the thing that I talk about a lot, even at work. Uh, that you won't always meet this this oh this overwhelmingness of hey we're we're a team uh, <laughs> a lot of times people will get upset if you know more than them and it's not that i and i i, I do know a lot i don't know everything and i will i will be the first one to tell you i do not know everything but at the same time i'm always going to strive to learn more and because of that i will constantly have growth if you have people who are like Say for instance, oh, I have my job and these are all the codes that they do and I'm not gonna try to learn anything else. There's no growth there. When there is no growth there, uh, it, that potential for more growth is stifled, okay? And then your knowledge base stays the same. When your knowledge base stays the same and you don't make an effort to expand and grow and learn more, you're only hurting yourself, the provider, the facility, the patient, and everybody else that is connected with this record. And, and, and it's the truth. So I always suggest that you don't go buy those cheat sheets. Um, go buy, not, not purchase, but buy. Don't go buy the cheat sheets. If somebody says, this is our cheat sheet, this is what we always uh, use, and this is what we always pick and whatever. It's different when it says, okay, these are our commonly used ones but not that you, those are only the ones that you go by. If there's something else happening, then you need to be picking up those additional procedures. Or if there's some another code that needs to be picked up, then you need to pick up that other code. So make sure that you always keep those things in mind. This is just so that that way everything is picked up. Okay. And again, don't go by those, those cheat sheets. Don't, don't just go along to get along. And if somebody is telling you these are the codes that we report, it's okay to verify and make sure that that is actually what is happening in that encounter. Okay. Because you're number one, you're protecting that provider. You're protecting uh, yourself because you are actually indeed coding properly. And if somebody has an issue with you uh, changing codes or you know changing um, uh, procedures that are selected, then be prepared to defend yourself as far as this is what uh, the documentation says, this is the description of that code or that procedure, and this is how it's matching up. Ask questions. And again, don't go along to get along because it's not going to benefit anybody, okay? And again, you want to make sure that you are always striving to get to more detailed documentation, more, um, more detail in the code selections as well. It's very, very important, okay? Uh, so that was, that was my main thing about today's topic was, you know, always accepting the fact that we have to grow and accepting the fact that we have to study all the time. And if you are not into that, that is, this is part of what we do. And a lot of people don't either think about it or they, don't, they just don't wanna do it. And again, I think that that ill serves the facility or the place that they are working because if you have the same thing happening over and over again, every encounter is unique. Every patient is going to require a different, um, different, level of care okay and even if it is a straightforward <laughs> uh clinic that is always the same with the codes all the time verify make sure that everything is okay and if there's any updates 
Make sure you're going through those updates. Understand the procedures and the diagnoses that you are reporting as far as like selecting wise. You need to make sure that you understand those things. Sometimes when people, I've seen people who, um, who insist on coding orthopedic aftercare for injuries after they've had surgery, that's, that's incorrect. Even if the patient has had a surgery and they are out of that surgery, you will report, you will continue to report the, um, the injury code with the appropriate seventh digit character of A, D, or S, you know, uh, active or, or subsequent or sequela. So you really have to understand that. And there's a lot of people that just don't get it. When you're reading the rules, you'll understand and you'll really, you'll really start to get it. But if somebody says, oh no, we, we report orthopedic aftercare here. No, you need to stand up and say, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> the rules say this and the rules are very clear and the rules are very finite. There's a reason for the rules. The patient had a surgery because of an injury. Yes, but it, this is not an organic condition. This is an injury. This is, this is why they had to have this surgery. And they're in the healing phase now. They're in that subsequent phase. So that's when you would report a D, you know, for that subsequent care. Because all of that is included in the subsequent care. So there's a lot, there's a lot to learning these different things and these different nuances for different clinics and different specialties. But it is possible. And the more you start to invest time in learning these little individual things, the better off you'll, you're going to be. And it's not to say that you don't, you shouldn't listen to your coworkers if they're giving you advice. Uh, but at the same time, you know, make sure and verify everything that they're saying is actually true. Okay. Cause sometimes there's going to be times when you know things that your coworkers don't know. Uh, when I first started here at this facility, uh, they, I, I was doing inpatient professional service rounds, which is, um, the equivalent of profi coding. Okay. Profi coding, if you don't know, is, so an a outpatient provider goes up to an inpatient floor and they do their rounds like uh, because they, they are, they're also co-taking care of this patient. A patient comes in, a diabetic patient, and they're admitted to the floor because they had um, high blood sugar. Okay, let's just go with that. So the endocrine team uh, admits this patient to an inpatient floor. At the same time, um, they also have um, a diabetic foot. Okay, so they're going to go ahead and consult the podiatrists on staff uh, at that hospital. And they're going to say, we need you to come in and check out this uh, patient's diabetic foot. So the podiatrist comes up and for all the services that that pod podiatrist has to come to that floor and do is what a profi coder is going to handle and report and take care of. So that is what that is. And when you have... Um, and it's the same thing for moms and babies. Um, when, when of course, mothers, they go in, they usually have a whole team of doctors as well. Uh, mothers tend to have different conditions that happen to them. And sometimes a mother will be 40 plus weeks. And when I see 40 plus weeks, if I see a mother that's in at uh, 42 weeks, okay, and they're admitted and they're, and they're trying to have this baby, and I will select... I was selecting the uh, the post term um, for for prolonged prolonged uh, pregnancy, okay? Because uh, it's after a certain amount. I have to look in the book because it's been a while since I've worked moms. <laughs> uh, but I was picking that code up. Well, when I got here, the other girls were not selecting that code, and they didn't think about that code. They they said, "Well, the mother's not complicated." I said, "I understand that, but you know, when you get into that post term." Um, where the, the pregnancy is extended a little bit longer, you know, the potential for complications does arise. So it is clearly documented that this patient is post-term and, you know, this code needs to be picked up. Well, it was a huge argument with my coworkers. Well, then our supervisor had to step in and get involved and was like, no, you know, Blue's right. You know, you, you would pick that up. And um, she's like, how did you learn that? Well, the facility that came from before, there was lots of mothers that were uh, high risk and a lot of them came in, you know, uh, late like that. So it just so be, it just so happened to be things that I learned. Well, of course, my coworkers here didn't know that. And, you know, they, they hadn't been exposed to, to thinking and looking at it like that. So again, 
It is getting the, the codes sharper. It is getting the selection a little bit more in detail and things like that. So listening to your coworkers at that point would have helped. But of course, uh, when you are the, the new kid on the block, it, it doesn't uh, always go so well. <laughs> but you have to stand behind the things that you are coding. Because at the end of the day, it's your name that's on that uh, code selections and things like that. So something to keep in mind. But never be afraid to stand up, especially for the correct coding. Uh, that is part of our ethics as well. You do not miscode to appease anybody, okay? You code based on the rules, you code based on the documentation, and that's what you do. And it's, it's so important. Uh, and I've seen too many people be scared to say anything, or if they're being audited, they say, well, you know, I don't, I don't wanna fight, I don't wanna argue, so I'll just accept the error. And sometimes that error was not even an error. Okay, uh, auditors are human too. They they pick up things or they look at things, you know, not perhaps not the correct way. So it is okay to question them, and it's not to question them because you're trying to be rude. It is you're questioning them because you want to make sure that the facts are are there. I mean, the the this code that is being selected is the proper code because again, and I've talked about this before, you have to remember that these codes follow these patients everywhere that they go in their medical record. So you want to make sure that you're doing your part when you're part of this and that you are actually selecting the correct codes because it can affect that patient as well. So that's something to think about and it's something to consider. Okay, so I hope that this <laughs> video has helped you. Uh, always strive to learn more. It's, it's only going to be better for you. And the more uh, high caliber you are, the more valuable you'll be. Okay, so this is my opinion on that one. I'll go ahead and wrap this one up. But uh, I hope that you've enjoyed today's episode. Uh, I hope you'll consider supporting me on Patreon. I do have a Patreon channel. Uh, I have unofficial exercises there, but I do talk more in detail about the fine details of medical coding as far as talk about myself. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I will leave that link down in the description box below. If this video helps you, please share it. If you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. <laughs>